talking about 10 million people stand to lose emergency unemployment benefits on September 6th, just in time for Labor Day. That means the race is on for individuals in the broader economy to replace lost government income with earnings from employment. Near term, many economists think the lost revenue will win out. Nancy Vanden Hooten of Oxford Economics writing this morning, we don't expect the end of emergency benefits to lead to an immediate jump in employment and the near term expect it will weigh more on personal income and spending. Total claims that puts together regular jobless jobless benefits and the pandemic emergency programs still top 12 million as of the latest data, which comes from mid-August. Most of these will expire, meaning an end to some six billion dollars in weekly transfers from the federal government and state governments, by the way, to individuals. Andrew Stetner from the Century Foundation told me it will have a big impact. It takes time for people to find work, and most people didn't start looking till they got vaccinated in April. Several studies have shown that ending benefits leads only to a minor increase in employment, if any at all. A recent paper by Kyle Coombs at Columbia and others at Harvard and elsewhere found that 25 percent of those who lost extended benefits found work after losing the government check. And that compares to 21 percent who found work when they were still receiving the check. That's a modest, but it is a statistically significant difference. Stetner points out, though, that the benefits end with minority employment still substantially higher than the average so they will be among the hardest hit. And it comes amid the outbreak of the Delta variant, which could make it harder to find work and suggests that an end to the pandemic will put more people back to work than an end to benefits will. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.